113 to 113A Salem Street, Boston Barber Company. Robert Del Russo has filed an appeal for conditional use of and tanning two booths to the existing barber shop and nail salon. Uh, good evening. My name is Bill Farrell. I'm here representing Robert Del Russo. Why don't you come around with me? Nice <laughs> 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 We're starting. Uh, as many of you know, Robert uh, has operated uh, what he calls the Boston Barber Company at 113 Salem Street for the past five years. Uh, actually, in 2009, uh, the landlord, in conjunction with uh, Robert on the lower level, the basement level, and the nail salon on the upper level, uh, did an expansion of the building at the rear. Uh, creating some additional space for the barber shop and additional space for the nail salon. Uh, we have some photographs going around. I'm just going to hold this up to show you what the sort of existing shop looks like if you're not familiar. Uh, extremely well done. Uh, he had a great contract that uh, finances his work. Uh, was his brother back there, Michael. Uh, and he is uh, applying now to use that additional space uh, for two. Uh, what we are referring to as accessory uses, meaning that the primary use will continue to be the barber shop, which is rather busy and uh, quite popular. Uh, it has five uh, barber chairs, uh, so uh, it fills up uh, pretty quickly. Uh, in the rear space, which is the new space, uh, he's proposing to put two panning booths. They're self-contained uh, items. Um, if there are some are there any extra floor plans? We'll, we'll circulate this around yep. as well. Yep. Uh, the uh, the panning booths uh, are self-contained units, meaning uh, they're approximately uh, five feet wide, by maybe eight or nine feet. Yes. <coughs> Four feet wide by about seven and a half feet long. So when you open the door, you walk in, there's a changing room, and then you walk into the next room, uh, which is the panning room itself. Uh, just in front of that is an area that has uh, nothing in it, uh, which would be the uh, what's referred to by the city as body art it's tattoos. Uh, body art covers uh, tattoos and other items uh, such as piercing and so forth. But this is intended to be for a tattoo artist uh, who is not uh, engaged because this is proof. But it will not be Robert. It will be a uh, independent contracting individual who will work for Ron, uh, who will maintain an area uh, in the rear uh, of Tattoo, whether it will have uh, one uh, they refer to as seats, but the seats recline uh, that's used for tattooing. And uh, the establishment itself has to be licensed. It has to have all the necessary uh, sanitary requirements and the individual has to be licensed individually. So both parties uh, have to receive licenses through the uh, Boston Public Health Commission uh, that licenses this use. Uh, it's not going to change uh, anything about the operation, meaning uh, it currently opens at 10 in the morning, closes at 8 in the evening, and that will remain the same. Uh, you will make your appointments the same way, you will use it the same way. Uh, we are saying, again, as accessory, it's similar to a couple of other things. One is we have any number of uh, so-called beauty salons that also, for example, may have nail service, may have other services uh, as well, uh, massage, etc. I don't know if 
who wants to not then do or not, but some I think do a lot of front. Uh, and uh, as Robert also points out, some of them do uh, a farmer tattooing that's called permanent makeup uh, for the eyebrows and uh, eyelids, etc. Uh, I would also point out that actually uh, what the Century Bank today used to be Mario's barbershop years ago when I was young, and he featured also uh, steam rooms and shoe shine. I did the shoe shine. So, uh, uh, that's uh, part of, uh, again, why we say this is accessory. It's not meant to replace uh, the hair cutting, uh, which is the basis of the shop. It's meant to have additional services. Um, someone asked about signage. We don't intend to have any additional signs. We remain the same. This is word of mouth. Uh, some website service, uh, if you see from the picture, uh, it's sort of a, a high gloss uh, finish in there, looks very nice. And the new section, the same way, marble floors, uh, leather boots, uh, very nice uh, area. And I think that's the extent of uh, what we would say is the information available for this. We uh, will be going to uh, Board of Appeal, it's not a variance. Conditional use, which means uh, does this use uh, encumber the barber shop uh, any more than additional barber chairs? And we would say no. <coughs> this isn't going to draw people uh, who are waiting in line or people who are double parking cars to run for a tattoo or a tan. <coughs> so uh, we don't believe there's any inconvenience associated with this. Bill, could you explain to the audience, because I know there's some confusion about conditional use and the zoning code, yep. um, and also forbidden use. Yep. So it's my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, that body art establishments conditional use in basements and first story and second story in the zoning code, and that um, canning is a forbidden use that has to require a variance, if I'm not correct, correct me. Uh, could you didn't find us that they're both conditional. Uh, in this location. Uh, Salem Street is a uh, business district um, to, to explain. The zoning code has three categories. Allowed use, uh, meaning uh, in, in this particular location, an, an allowed use would be, for example, a retail store uh, as allowed commercial use. Uh, forbidden uses are those that are, are not allowed require a variance before you can use that in that location. And conditional fall in the middle is a different test for conditional. Uh, and it's, uh, I paraphrased a moment ago, it, it, the general test to a conditional use is, does it create any greater burden than what the uh, allowed use would be? So since it's allowed as a barbershop, would this use be any greater burden uh, than uh, more barber chairs, for example? So, so that's how they distinguish the three categories. So you, your understanding is that both the tattoo and the sun, the tanning, are uh, both conditional use? Uh, that's what the, okay. the, the, that package I gave you. Did that refer to the user letter and such? No, it's on the package. I know there was some confusion about that. Yeah, they, they, uh, they have classified both as conditional uses. Okay, perfect. Okay. 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 Uh, will you assess people's age before you serve them or think about the school down? I don't think there'll be a wave of students coming in, but will you at least take some oversight of the ages of the customers? Uh, first, the, the law uh, provides that no one under the age of 18 okay. uh, can receive a tattoo. Uh, 18 is generally the accepted practice for canning. There, there are, of the regulations, some exceptions. Now, what parent brings their under 18 year old in for canning? I'm not exactly sure. Um, but this uh, uh, Robert will have an 18-year uh, requirement, and for both of these items, you have to sign certain disclosures and uh, acknowledgments when you commit both to the tanning uh, and the tattoo. Thank you. Uh, 
you mentioned there's only a book for one artist? Correct. Just one, one artist. Yes. And two ten. And when, when you say about, when you talk about conditional use, conditional use, does conditional use get reviewed by the city over over time? Uh, or is it like through inspection services or anything like that? Can you expand on that? Um, conditional use, once it's in place, stays in place until it's either surrendered, meaning you change the use, or abandoned. If you don't use it for more than two years, it's considered abandoned and goes back to a prior use. And uh, the city uh, inspects and regulates any oh, and, 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 and yep, uh, aggressively. Uh, and, and, and you're, you're required to renew the licensee is required to do once a year the establishment twice uh, every two years like something like that. I mean, every two years for the establishment uh, and once a year for uh, the individual okay, yes, but they're all and you have to maintain a log of uh, you, you are required to have uh, a log for your uh, pickup of any uh, product you know, such as uh, the needles that you use uh, you have to have a log of your uh, testing the sanitation equipment called the autoclave, like they use in a dental office uh, for the actual equipment that's used. And you have to have uh, the products that are necessary for sanitation and cleaning. And you're subject to uh, health department inspections too? Absolutely. Yeah. Is there going to be any like, partition between the hair? Yeah, yeah we'll, uh, it's going to be completely separate. Yeah. It's, not, it's not built now because we're not allowed to until. Could you just go the hours of operation again? And are they the same for the barber shop and the nails? Yes. Everything else? Everything every, the same? Yeah. Ten, 10 uh, in the morning until 8 in the evening. Okay. So, and you, to correct Billy, the, the, actually the, uh, the tanning is not 18 or over. It's actually 14 or over, which is, I find to be ridiculous. I mean, 14 or over tanning is insane. I well, we with permission, yeah. right? With permission of a parent, right. it's 14 or older, and I won't allow that. And anyway. it has to be 18 or older, and they have to fill. So, and I mean, under 18 with 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 the parent, I still won't allow it. Yeah, can you pick up also? Can you see the need for tattooing in this area? Well, I can see the tanning because I, you know, I see a lot of people. Sure. A lot of sure. Well, I could see the concerns of some people about tattooing, and, and I know the, the main concern is um, the um, the element that it may bring into the neighborhood. And, and, and I actually, I really do understand people's concerns, but where it's so mainstream now, it's not it's not just uh, motorcycle guys. And I have so many people coming in. Last week, I had a, a 55 year old mom that came in and asked. I heard you're going to do tattoos, and I want to get a butterfly with my kid's name on it and stuff like that. I don't feel that we are going to attract any different type of clientele other than the clientele we already have in the shop itself, where people are tattoo enthusiasts and they, you know, they got tattoos on their face and their whole body. They usually have a place that they go, and then they're not going to come down here where we have one person, you know. Right, exactly. This is not the type of place I'm... I, every, if anyone knows me, they know everything I do is tasteful. So, thank you very much. So, uh, with that being said, I really don't think that it's going to cause anything. And if anyone knows me, I, I don't know... I grew up in this neighborhood. I want the best for it, too. So, I won't allow anything out of the ordinary going on in there. You know, so. Any other cancel? Oh, I'm sorry, Stephen, go ahead. I would just like to... Um, say a few things. Um, the first is um, I've known Robert a long time. I just want people to know I've known Robert for my whole life. Actually, we went to high school together. I get my hair cut there. My nephew gets his hair cut there. My stepson gets his hair cut there. <clears throat> my brother and Mike, um, my brother and Robert's brother are best friends. My sister hangs out with Robert. So, so and I just want to be in the level with everybody. And I know people probably are thinking, um, you know, body art and first of its kind was setting a precedent and it's not, um, it's just an added service. And I think people should be aware that it's just an added service. Just like the tanning salon, tanning boots will be an added service. Um, it's not gonna be a tattoo problem. And Rob, it's nail on the head where it's not gonna be a place where Hell's Angels are gonna show up and get tattoos. That's just not the way the industry is. 
they have specific artists that they visit to get those specific tattoos that they get. Um, I think what's most important is the fact that we have someone who is probably uh, fourth generation, not then. And I think the essence of a good neighborhood, and I think what makes for a great neighborhood is having locally owned businesses. So when someone comes before the council and they are born in the neighborhood, mother and father born in the neighborhood, uh, family had businesses in the, in the not then years ago, they had a funeral home, um, his uncle had Benito's restaurant on Fleet Street. I mean, I think you have to take into account the track record of not only Robert, but his entire family and, and, and their service to the community. And like I said, I think it's, I think if we could get more businesses that were locally owned, literally by people who live in the neighborhood and who are gonna stay here for a long time, I know Robert doesn't plan on leaving. Um, I think, I think that's, I think, I think that supersedes everything. I, I, if, if we had locally owned businesses, this place would be a, a better neighborhood. And I think we need to support locally owned businesses. And um, you know, I obviously support support the guy. I mean, I've known him a long time, and I trust him, and I know that there's going to be no back in there if that's what people are worried about. Um, you know, people hear body out and right off the rip. You know, it's probably you know they're thinking guys coming in with long gold tees and you know thinking about you know. Is that element, and, and I know the stigma that goes with that, but I don't think that's the case. The, the, the shop is absolutely classic. If you've ever been in this barber shop, it's 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 one of the nicest looking places in the neighborhood. It really is. I'm not just saying that. It's it's shop, and, 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 and Robert's an artist. He's a barber, but he's an artist. He's always been an artist. He's always had. Uh, he's always been a visionary like that. He's always the first to do everything with the kids. And you know something, there's got to be a first or something. And if it's body art, then so be it. You know, I'm sure. Um, you know, Mike's wasn't the first um, bakery here, a pastry shop. I'm sure there was a first restaurant here at one time. So, I mean, we live in a very, we live in a very big business district. I mean, there's a lot of business. Um, I don't see it affecting the neighborhood in a negative way. But I think we should support people like Rob. I think that's, I think that'll build a, a strong neighborhood and locally owned businesses operating um, in the neighborhood. So that's all. Thank you, Stephen. Does any other council member have any questions or comments? Before I open up to, to the audience, Bill, could you just talk to us a little bit? I know you said, said to me and to the council, neighborhood notification. Uh, we uh, did several things. It came to our attention that the 44 prints, uh, which is behind us, had received it. So we did a couple of things. We mailed it around the association and we dropped the packet uh, over to the concierge last week. Uh, other than that, uh, we notified both the residents and the owners of the properties uh, going two down to Palmetto, three up, and then on the other side of the street, two from Cooper, <coughs> and two going uh, back towards uh, where Dom's used to be. What's that? Bartlett Place. Okay, thank you. I think that's important for people to know. Can you just talk a little bit about the coffee service? No, they, they, someone brought that up. There is a, you can help yourself. We we keep uh, cold drinks. Uh, sometimes they'll make coffee. You can help yourself while you're while you're having a haircut to a uh, bottle of water or soda or a cup of coffee. But you're not selling anything. No, I'm not. Okay. The coffee is all self-contained. Yes, yeah. like those pods. But it's something complimentary. Like a curling machine. Yeah. 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 Um, anybody else? Oh, I'm going to Where are you going to place the, the, we talked about the tattoo file being in an enclosed room, and which part of the store will the tattoo file It's completely separate from the barber shop. It's in the, the, uh, the yeah. additional. Yeah, if you, uh, look, if you look at the photos at the end of where you see the, uh, oh, I'm sorry. After you see the chairs, this is a half wall there now. Behind that wall will be the tattoo area that will eventually be enclosed. Uh, What's the depth of the store? <laughs> Mike, the depth of the of the, the store uh, from the street to the back of the um, yes. it's got to be close to sixty feet. 60, 60 yeah. So that so the tattoo portion of the store will be all the way in the back. All right. Set back in about right. Well, there's when you walk in, there's the five chairs, mm -hmm. one right after another, and there's the half wall, and it'll probably be. A little over 50 feet away from the front door, behind the, the back wall, and then there's the tanning right next to the. The total tattoo area is about 50 to 60 square feet in total. And it's on the new addition. It's in a new addition the be behind right. what would be a larger separation right. of the and building. You won't be able to see it from the street at all from, from the windows in the back. <coughs> it's more visible 
to anyone. There won't be any signs either, so. <coughs> okay, any council members? All right, anyone out there? Anybody have any questions or comments? Tom. I'm sorry, Tom. What? No, okay. I'm sorry, Victor. No, 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 no. Okay, Victor? Yeah, you know, Victor Brown, Atlantic Avenue. There's still some confusion about so um, if both the body art and the uh, the tanning are conditional uses, where does the accessory use that you've mentioned fit into the picture? No, that's how it's described for zoning purposes. In other words, it's primary use and accessory use. So uh, primary use is still the barber shop. Uh, accessory use simply means that we're not giving up the primary use of the space. So I think of another example for you. You could have uh, uh, a residential unit and have an accessory office use because you use one role uh, for clients to visit. That's an accessory use, but it's within your condo, for example. Uh, the same here is that the space being used for the tanning of the tattoo uh, is not the primary use of the space, it's a secondary use. So it doesn't stand on its own, They're like two separate uses. But if they're both conditional, you don't have to go to accessory use to legalize this thing. No, you're confusing two different categories of the code. In other words, if you look at the code, the code has its primary uses, and then at the end of the primary uses are accessory uses, which are secondary uses. Uh, meaning you have to have a primary use to have an accessory use. Accessory use doesn't stand the wall. You can't have an accessory canning use by itself. What's an accessory to it? That's the accessory to primary use. Still confused? Yeah. They're both conditional. Conditional is, is a different it's a different classification. Conditional is whether it's allowed or not. You just you're mixing two different that's an apple, the other's an orange. You're missing two different categories. I'll show you the code. I have it with me. So that just means you can't Stop the barber shop. Take the barber shop well, the barber up. Shop just put the so right? right? right. That's um, pretty much all it. Sir, all sir, it. sir yeah. we ask everybody just to state their name, please. Oh, okay. Tommy. Sorry. Good. Good. Just state, state your name and where you live, and then ask your question. Uh, Tommy, I live on Java Street. Okay. It's actually not a question. It's the the usages for, for the barber shop first. That's the primary usage, right? Right. Okay. And the second, it's like a secondary use. Right. So, being that the primary use is the barber shop, it will not. The barber shop won't go away, and it will just turn into a set, uh, tin salon. That's thing. The that's that's, right. that's what that means. It has to be accessory to right a to the barber shop. Correct. Anybody else have any questions? Any comments? Okay. Do I have a motion? I'd like to make a motion to support. <coughs> what do you support? Um, Accessory use of body art and tanning. Okay. I second that. All in favor? Is it unanimous? Unanimous. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you very much. Um, and we wish you well in your business. Absolutely.